So I want to go back to um, the relationship again and just, um, you know, like kind of take it from where we left it because I feel like we kind of like left it hanging. Um, so, you know, like having exposed, in a sense, relationship, it's like, where do I go from there? You know, what do I do with this information? Because I am going to be in relationship. In a way, it's like I cannot not be in relationship, at least as the world defines it. Of course, I guess another good thing to bring up is that, you know, I, I don't really know what relationship is. I don't remember my experience of relationship, which was relationship with the Father. That's blurred in my mind. I don't fully remember that. And that that's really what relationship is, not what I have defined as relationship in terms of this world. So that's a that's a discovery in there because you you've just made two statements. You started off your first statement that came out of your mouth was, you know, I guess everyone can't can't, can't help but be in relationship in this world and so forth and then the second statement you made was a statement of, well, you, you kind of said, well, I guess you could say or you could add, well, you, there's something that's completely opposite of what you first said. When you, The second part was that I don't know what rela real relationship is. And you see that, that there's an incongruity or an uncertainty there. It has to be one or the other. That either you understand relationship or you don't. And that, the second part, opens the mind to a willingness to be, to, to, to learn or to allow the Holy Spirit to teach the real meaning of, of true relationships. So, the, the opportunity is here as we come together with the joining of minds instead of projecting out uh, of, I think I know what relationship is, and I have a relationship with this friend, or I have an intimate relationship with this person, or so on and so forth. It's, it's coming together, gathering with that intent of, I don't know, I want to be, I want to learn, I want to, to see differently. And it really is no different than anything that we've talked about today. Uh, and since we've talked about the subject object split, um, when there is a subject object split, when the mind has, has split itself off and, and into those two components, those two parts, then there is no relationship. Because the mind has, has literally denied its identity, and only in its true identity is it in real relationship. So relationship, mistakenly, is associated with two-ness. Real relationship can only be associated with oneness. I mean, you know, it's like I talk about being in relationship with someone else. And there's that two-ness already, you know, it's like, um, So obviously, I don't know what relationship is <laughs> if I'm thinking of it in terms of myself relating to someone else. The two-ness also, it, it comes down to the levels in the sense that mind is one. That when we speak of mind as one, we can still speak of, of, of causation, of cause and effect. And, and one could say, well cause and effect. There's a two-ness to cause and effect, but cause and effect are inseparable. That, and simultaneous. Yes, that, right. that uh, right, to have a, to be an effect, you know, there has to be a cause, and, and to be a, have, to be a cause, one has to have an effect. They're, you know, they're very, they're interdependent in that sense, and, and we're getting into the realm of, of the mind and of creation in that sense, that the Father and Son are of one will and are of one mind. The Father is the cause, and the Son is the effect. The Father is the prime creator, 
and the Son is the creation. And the Son, being like the Father, is a, is a co-creator or is capable of creating and extending His will as the Father did. But we're, but we're speaking in that sense of, of, of one mind. There, there's no distinction, there's no distinctive difference between the Father and Son, other than, by, other than the function of, of creation, that the Father created the Son and the Son did not create the Father. Once we get into the projected realm of the error of separation projected out of the world, then we have specifics. And then we, there's the sense of duality and, and two-ness in the world, where we have specific differences. And that's what relationship in this world is thought to be. Um, once again, it's a construct. It's a relationship between my person and my house, my person and my wife's personhood, or children's personhood, objects, my car, my school, my sports team, you know, my clothes, my skills, my typing skills, my intelligence, da 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 da. So there's a separate sense of an individual self. And, and all relationship in this world is, is special in that sense because it's not really a relationship at all. It's, it's thought form associations. It's a, it's a relationship or a relative um, construct of meaning that really is meaning at all. So, so it's holy relationship. Well, a holy relationship would be to, to remove, step back and to not judge the, the constructs to, to uh, withdraw the mind from that. And it's still a metaphor if you can think of, um, of two minds, if you will, with, with one intent, with, with, with the purpose of um, consistently holding in mind that, that the entire world is a construct, of not letting anything come between them, so to speak. There are no personal interest, no sense of a separate self than another, but but still using the word relationship in the sense of, of um, um, as if there are persons. I mean, as, as you start to approach a holy relationship, mm -hmm. it's like each person looks within and sees the wholeness and completeness within themselves and, and therefore doesn't doesn't feel lacking, doesn't feel like they got to get something, they have to bargain with the other person. Obviously this is still a concept and a construct because we're still talking about personhood mm -hmm. and persons. But it's a, it's a very high construct because it's not based on, on lack. Um, in, in the old, it's like a, it's a construct that is pointing towards the uh, resolution of subject and object. That would be one of those more helpful constructs. Mm -hmm. Yes. A phenomenal learning accomplishment, as the Course says. It takes a lot of mind training to give up one's investment in a, in a personal small self. And uh, metaphorically, two people who, who have that as their focus or intention move towards that holy relationship where they, they give up all the bargains and the reciprocity seeking someone to please them, to gratify, gratify them or satisfy them in, in some way. So the focus is, is solely on that one intent. Yes. And that's how you're, um, that's how it's possible not to have any personal interest that you're into it. I mean, the one intent, um, to step back, to be the observer, to not have personal interest. I mean, the, when differences do seem to come up, or when there is a upsetting, the mind is upset, then that's seen as an opportunity to openly talk about it. There's a willingness to just kind of lay things on the table and, and tell it as it's perceived, and to support each other into seeing, oh, that's just another belief that I'm still holding on to, without attacking or defending the belief, mm -hmm. but just kind of a laying on, on the table and, and looking at it. And in that sense, the, 
that, that's a metaphor of, of a way that, that relationship can be used and is a helpful um, tool in awakening. So a holy relationship is um, merely a reflection of that father-son relationship. Yes, like a miniature mm -hmm. of that. So in terms of, you know, what to do with relationships, that's what to do with relationships, is to have the intention be that they be, each one be a holy relationship. Yes, every and what if the other person isn't aware of all this? No, it's it's in my mind anyway, yeah. right? Every it's not time, dependent, obviously, on the other person. It's every only time I'm upset, I mean, I'm obviously projected. Um, anger, you know, is, is nothing more than an attempt to make someone else feel guilty. And every time I'm angry or upset with someone or something, it's it's an attempt to project the responsibility, you know, onto to someone else. It's an attempt to to uh, play the victim of external happenings again. And uh, in a sense, if seen aright or seen correctly, it's a great opportunity to uh, to be grateful for the opportunity to see mm -hmm. what what's going on. What what am I buying into? What construct or Thought form association is so important that I'm letting it stand between my brother and myself, or my awareness of my of my true self, Christ. If I'm offended by a, a partner, a lover, a friend, a neighbor, a on on someone at work, I'm offended in Christ. I mean, the Christ is is always there. It's always there. My awareness of it, and whenever I am offended in anything, I have have a belief, a grievance, uh, a block in my own mind that I need to let go of, that I need to to see. It's just a false idea that I can I do not need to invest in. So it's a real gratefulness for what the world calls even relationship, because it allows that opportunity to to get in touch with that. If I if I get into the aesthetic mode and I want to just run away from the world and not be around people and run into the mountains, so to speak, you know, it, it still is an opportunity to practice mind watching and, and to go into the silence and to disidentify from the thought forms of the world, but the it's a great time saver. It's a great acceleration when I can use the seeming relationships of this world to help me get in touch with my belief and my concepts that I'm holding on to. And is a special hate relationship simply looking at that as an attack instead of looking at that as an opportunity? I mean, is that, isn't that where the special hate relationship comes in? It's where I feel undermined and feel like... Um, you know, I've got something to lose and something to protect and defend that's being attacked. Um, instead of seeing that, aha, this is just another signal. This is another opportunity to um, get in touch with what that construct is that I'm invested in. Well, in a sense, the special love relationship and those thought form associations are 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 just a different form, a masked form of hatred. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like the special hate relationship is an attack, and special love in some way isn't. isn't. Yeah. It's, it's just a different form. I mean, it's very deceptive, the special love relationship, because it seems to be that you are complimenting me. You are agreeing with my views. You are um, bringing me pleasure. You are... are uh, I love having you around in, in the special love relationship because you're fulfilling needs and everything. But the, the, always the flip side is, is since you are literally my substitute for God, that um, heaven forbid you change, you stop agreeing with me, you stop providing me with what I, what I need, you change from, from what you have done in the past and, and deviate and do something different. For then the wrath of, of the